Hey everyone, this is Norm Ferrar, aka The Beard Guy here, and welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. Today we're going to be discussing the power of SMS marketing in 2024. Who should be using SMS, SMS uh, marketing? How can sellers grow their SMS subscriber list? And what are some of the best practices for writing effective text messages? All right, welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. Okay, like I mentioned earlier, today we are talking about the power of SMS marketing in 2024. Our guest is the co-founder of Cart Boss, an SMS solution for recovering abandoned carts with a single SMS. He looks to address the challenges of cart abandonment, turning lost opportunities into recovered sales by implementing timely and personalized text messages. He's on a mission to capture and recover sales before they slip away permanently. And today, sit back, I'm going to get this name right. Today, Bogota, Bogota. There we go. I slightly missed it up uh, today, but I almost got it. All right, now let's have a word from our sponsor. And today's sponsor is going to be Seller Basics. Hey, Amazon sellers ever faced account suspensions, ASIN hiccups, or IP headaches? Introducing Seller Basics, your Amazon accounts guardian, which is $99 per month, or code norm, $89 per month. Seller Basics offers a dedicated team to shield your business from these challenges. Plus, this membership offers free legal consultations from seasoned e-commerce attorneys. No long-term contracts, cancel with just a month's notice. And with Seller Basics, you can see them as your Amazon Accounts Health Plan. You can check them out at sellerbasics.com. And now for the disclaimers, Seller Basics isn't an insurer or law firm. Consultations come from independent firms. Results can vary. Membership is needed before events leading to claims and terms apply. Okay, now let's get back to the mayor of Blunderville. Happy Friday. Happy, happy. Happy, happy, happy. Happy, happy, happy joy, joy, as Ren and Skimpy used to say. Are you too young for that? No, no, no. I caught that. I think I was watching that for some reason when I was like six. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I think you were. Yeah, we have the, we have the whole series <laughs> got, yeah. on videotape. <laughs> yeah, I, I got some trauma from those episodes I think, early on. So. I think I did too. <laughs> Uh, good to see Steve. We got Drip and Bearded Mimic all in the comment sections already. Good to see everyone. Um, we want to let everyone know that there's been some changes with like Facebook and their policies and their what they're doing with their streaming platforms. So if you uh, if you notice in our Facebook group, we won't be able to stream into Facebook groups any longer um, from our StreamYard platform. So uh, we have to stream to a Facebook page and then um, share that into the Facebook group. So it's a little bit different, um, but I think we recommend uh, YouTube overall. That seems to be the best viewing um, experience for our uh, listeners. So if you wanna hop on over there. Um, but yeah, Facebook changed up some things and we're no longer able to stream into Facebook groups. Uh, so yeah, find us on a Facebook page and a YouTube channel. It's just another way for people to abandon Facebook. Yeah, yeah, it is true. Um, but anyways, we'll keep it going. And uh, let's see, make sure you sign up for our newsletter that comes out every Monday. Um, you can check it out. Uh, the links are in the description. And uh, I think that's it. All right. So just before I forget, we do have our webinar coming up. Uh, Kevin King and I have the uh, Marketing Misfits uh, webinar, the AI uh, e-commerce summit and uh, success summit, I think it's called. But uh, Kelsey, if you can put that link up, um, we uh, we have a limited number of seats. Uh, we've got a thousand, uh, we have 1500 people or more now registered. Uh, but you know, we always know that certain people or a certain percentage won't show. So we're pretty close to that 1000 cap. But if you could, um, you know, register and just get on the podcast or the webinar earlier. 
also like kelsey said we have the um the, the newsletter that came out and we're getting great response in fact um our growth rate on the newsletter is incredible can't believe thank you guys for sharing it uh we're getting lots of referrals and lots of content from uh service providers and people that just want to be in the newsletter so thank you for that uh and lastly uh we have in just a couple of weeks uh well no a couple of days our first podcast out so kevin and i have joined forces and come up with the marketing misfits and it's just a podcast about people who have broken the rules and have come out ahead and i'm sure if there's a misfit out there that did their best and maybe missed the target maybe failed uh i hate using that word failed but learned from this mistake we'll have them on too so you don't have to be a success story you could also just be someone who tried something and learned that it didn't work for you so if you know a misfit just let us know and we'll try to get them on as well we've got already 10 people that we've talked to and uh, it's awesome i just reviewed the first one that's being uploaded into podbean and i think you're gonna love it it's katie wells so that's it uh now let me see if you'd like sit back relax grab a cup of coffee and let's welcome today to the show hey guys hey hi what's up <laughs> what's up that's right and thank you for having an easy name it looks hard but an easy name to pronounce that that helps uh that helps me out a little bit <laughs> yeah yeah i mean it does need a bit of explanation but yeah the j in the end it's not just don't use it yeah yeah thank just thank you for letting me know what your your first name was and how it was pronounced because i would have butchered it really bad um okay today let's yeah. talk about uh something we don't usually talk about and uh it's overlooked underrated and that's sms marketing especially um you know for e-commerce sellers or uh, amazon sellers how can they utilize sms <clears throat> Well, I mean, regard if you're not an Amazon seller, it's quite easy because you just need to connect to a service that provides sending text messages. So the service just needs to either gather the text, the phone numbers, or just have some automations prepared. If you're an Amazon seller, I honestly don't have a solution for you because, like, when you're buying something on Amazon, you don't go through the checkout of the your own shop but you go through the amazon's checkout so you can't do much there but for example if you've got i don't know some uh, email subscription service i mean if you offer sending out newsletters you can actually just ask your subscribers if they want to subscribe also to the text message um, subscription and you can do it like that um, and the subscriptions are usually quite high uh, converting so you shouldn't have much problem problems with that yeah and with them again like you said if you have that list so for amazon sellers if you've got a insert and you're driving people over to your site and you are trapping uh emails um like today was saying you can also ask for the uh, phone number or you could go to a uh, a company in a pens company and you can ask for that information they might have it they might not but uh just being able to text people on a regular basis so you're you specialize in abandoned cart i can tell uh what we've done in the past and that is like beauty products or uh, fitness products or addiction products or addiction services well it would be just a fact going out and once we we got the uh the, the number we could send it out weekly we could send it out daily and we would mix up the content and we would add value to it just like we would a newsletter mm -hmm. so that it, and it's not and i think you'd agree with this it's not just promo 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 it's added value with the um with the promo so any thoughts on that yeah i mean a lot of thoughts uh the, the thing is uh my email inbox is completely filled i mean in the spam in the promotions everywhere on a daily basis i get i mean i get a lot of emails but mm -hmm. i would suspect that a normal person that doesn't do a lot of it business probably gets around 10 emails per day and you 
you don't check your emails on a regular basis. Um, I mean, the stats show that people actually check their emails once per day. Um, so you don't have a lot of wiggle room that you actually see the email regarding some promotion, regarding some notification, whatever. But with text messages, you, you actually receive it on your phone. You check it. You've got that, you know, notification circle around the text messages. Um, and for example, additionally, older people, they tend not to be that text savvy or just don't check the emails regularly. They can check the text messages. So the open rate is, a re is really high. Uh, usually if you add some emojis or you really personalize the text messages, you can get the click through rate really high compared to emails. So there's just a bunch of positive uh, side effects of using text messages. But of course, yeah, they, they are pricey compared to emails, but still the effect is so much better. When, when you say pricey, can you kind of define that? Or is that like saying, how long is a piece of string? Yeah, I mean, for example, <clears throat> I think that for 10,000 emails that you send out, it's going to cost you like a dollar or something like that. Via that's Amazon. not crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it, that's for emails. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Like when you go to the text message yeah. side, like for example, in Europe, you've got countries that you need to pay like 17 cents to send out a text message. Uh, the U.S. is really cheap. It's like um, 0 0.5 cents or something like that per text message. But if you compare that price to the price of an email, it's expensive. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, you, you don't, you shouldn't always check the price. You should check the results. Uh, for example, when I can check the results of our clients and I see that they've got a return of investment of, 2000% or something like that, you know, it's worth it in the end. Yeah. The, the open rate too. So right now with emails it's very hard to, I mean, we, you can't really even use an open rate as uh, a metrics, you know, it, it's just, it, it, sorry, uh, KPI because of, you know, of Apple's re, uh, Apple and meta and all these other um, platforms you get false information. It's your click-through rate that really tells you, you know, your metrics. And with email, tell me if I'm wrong, but the last I heard, it was over 90% open rate. With text messages, the open rate is around 97%. That's what I was going to say. And I didn't want to go that high. Yeah, yeah, but it's 97% open rate within the first three minutes of receiving the text message. Wow. Yeah, the average, really? Yeah, the average open rate, no matter the time span, is 99%. So the, the open rate is freaking insane. So that's why we don't even talk about open rates with text messages, because most of them will always get opened. What you always talk about with text messages getting read is actually a click-through rate. And the click-through rate with text messages is between 20 to 40%. I mean, it varies quite a lot because it depends if you're a brand sending out text messages or if you're just some random dropshipping company that just sells. So you yeah. even when you take that and compare it to emails, you, you have a phenomenal, a phenomenal click through rate at 10%. Yeah. Phenomenal. That's the high end. And yeah. then if you take a look, your low end is 20%. So again, it's just another great way to get the word out there. It's that blitz marketing. So would you recommend uh, combining email marketing with text messages or uh, SMS? Well, it depends on what you're you're trying to achieve and what kind of an online shop you are. Um, but most of the times, how I see things with our clients is that you're not going to lose if you send out an email and a text message, because either the text message is going to get read or the email is going to get read or both of them are going to be read. But in the end, what counts is the performance and the results in 
that that's what matters. Would you mix the messaging a bit? Like we had uh, John Benson on the other day, who's a phenomenal comedy co- um, comedy writer. <laughs> he probably is, but a uh, 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 copywriter. And in your email, you could do a more you know longer form email, and then you've got your um, message in your uh, for your SMS. But would you try to mix up the messaging just a bit? If one's hitting one, you try to hit one with the other, and then vice versa the next week and the week after that. Well, uh, again, really depends on what kind of an online store you you have. But overall, what you try to achieve, uh, you try to offer a discount at the for, with the first text message. Then you can offer free shipping with the second message. You can send an email as well with a bit of more information regarding the brand, the company, the culture, the, what you abandoned. Uh, and then you can see which message converted the best. And to give you like a bit of more insight, if you see that people convert more when you offer a di- percentage discount on the abandoned shopping cart versus the free shipping, then you can actually start focusing on maybe the, the prices aren't correct. Maybe you need to a better follow promotion, something, something, you know. But if you see that a lot of people decide to convert after they receive the message that uh, that you're offering free shipping, then maybe your shipping costs are a problem. So you can do so many A-B tests. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you're really open. So what I recommend actually is to test out different possibilities, check out different ways of communicating different messages that you're sending out and then see what fits your brand. Now, I I guess I'm already, we've already answered this because it's almost a hundred percent open rate, but um, a demographic, is there one demographic that stands out better for uh, CTR than another? Well, regarding our results, because we've got so many different, we didn't see any differences in um, demographics. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Did you see any differences? I really can't put my finger on it, but I would probably say, I can't even say that because even my parents, uh, who are a little bit older than me, I, you know, will look at a text message. So... And, you know, they're not that tech savvy. I don't even think they can use Skype, but um, <laughs> they can they can definitely look for a text message. They can't, can't use Skype, but they can answer a text message. And, and they can't even probably use WhatsApp or Viber or anything like that. They only use text messages. And th- that's one thing, actually. We got a lot of our clients and saying, why don't you offer WhatsApp messages as well or Skype or whatever? Mm-hmm. The answer is always the same because... Older people just know how to use text messages, and want, we want to just include everybody um, inside, you know. And if you use WhatsApp, uh, Skype, whatever the solution is, you're not gonna get the full um, experience. So, text messages are actually the go to solution if you want to stay in contact with the majority of uh, your visitors, yeah. And- I've got to say up to a couple of years ago, I wasn't using uh, WhatsApp and I, I do find it much more difficult than a simple text message. You know, you don't have to click anything. It's, it's, it's super easy now because I know what I'm doing, but just, it takes a bit of a learning curve, which a lot of older people aren't going to do. So text messaging, like you're saying with SMS, um, you know, is a much easier, better way to go, especially if you're trying to go over a much broader demographic. Now, I just noticed that Kelsey mentioned this. If if you're a first-time listener and you do have questions about SMS, we really haven't covered this too much uh, on the podcast. So if you do have questions, uh, don't be afraid to ask. If you're thinking of it, I'm sure other people are. So just post it in here and we'll get today to uh, uh, answer it uh, just uh, at the top of the hour. All right. Now, this is a this question uh I think is uber important because if you don't have a list, you you don't have anything. So how do you build a subscriber list? This has always been an issue for sellers. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So 
how to answer it. So there's quite a few legal steps. Uh, there is a GDPR in Europe, and mm -hmm. I think it's called CCPA in um, in uh, the US. I mean, there is a bunch of laws saying that you cannot get in touch with the people that abandoned your card, for example, on your shopping, um, I mean, on your checkout. Um, but the thing is that with the first message that you send out to the person, uh, let's say norm that you abandoned a card on my online shop. The thing is that because you abandoned it, uh, I can send you a text message saying, hey, was the checking checkout process problematic for you? Were you missing some uh, checkout, I mean, payment methods or maybe shipping methods? Let me know how, can, how I can help you. So the, the thing is that we're, we're actually in the process of negotiation. So the first message is actually a gray zone, which mm -hmm. means that you might actually be able to just simply send out, send a text message to the person that abandoned your card, the first one. But for the second one, you need to have a consent. Now, the consent is actually just the normal, you know, checkbox at the checkout saying, hey, I, I uh, agree with receiving promotional text messages and stuff like that. So on the checkout is where we get the phone numbers. You can also gather them with um, a pop-up uh, saying like, hey, enter your phone number here to get some notifications. But you always need a confirmational checkbox that people say like, hey, yeah, I agree with receiving text messages. Now, does it have to be specific text messages or it could be uh, the terms and agreements, TOS? Well, well, I'm not a lawyer, uh, so I, I'm not complete. The thing is, when I talk to different lawyers regarding this, there's our lawyer team, you know, that say like, hey, just the terms of service, in terms of service need to be set and you're okay. But then there's other lawyers that say, hey, you actually need to get consent, uh, like specifically for receiving text messages. So it's not... How, how would you say it? It's not, it, text messages are such a new thing. Like they've been around for two years, something like that, three. Uh, and re regarding legislations, it's said that you need to get consent. It's good enough if you have a checkbox that says that you're, um, you're allowing to receive text messages. Now, if that needs to be done only in the terms of service, or if it needs to be there on the checkout, that's usually that usually depends on the country, not like the whole uh, legislation. So, for example, uh, in Europe, uh, in Slovenia, it's quite open. You can send out uh, the first text message with no problems at all. But if you live in Germany, there is a problem. You cannot send out just a text message by default. You need to have like consent, consent from them. All right. Okay. We are at the bottom of the hour. And uh, if you're new to the podcast, we have a prize that we give away at the top of the hour. It's called the Wheel of Kelsey. To join, it's hashtag Wheel of Kelsey. Or you can tag two people and you can get a second entry. So today, uh, and I mean today's podcast or today's giveaway, today has a giveaway. And what is that today? So we're offering 300 free text messages um, to anyone that's the winner. So yeah, that's like quite a lot of money. So yeah, yeah, I mean, that's with fantastic. Our return on investment of around three thousand, two thousand to two thousand four hundred percent. You can do a lot with those three hundred messages. Right, especially when they're just imagine that to an email and the open rate being ninety. 9% uh, at, compared to, you know, what an email would be. So that's hashtag Wheel of Kelsey, tag two people, and you could win 300 te free text messages today or SMS messages. Okay, so I guess it's back on me. I've got a sponsor. Let's see right here. Uh, my good buddy, Colin Campbell. And by the way, Colin, uh, since we're going to be at BDSS, he did a pre-record with us where he talked about um, just 13 different ways you could use AI to build your business. And it was all based on this book. So this is Start, Scale, Exit, Repeat. It's by Colin C. Campbell. 
And he just talks about his journey as an entrepreneur over the last 20, 30 years. He's got 200 interviews in here and he breaks it down as almost like a re reference guy with the start, scale, exit, and repeat. And then he has four different uh, modules in there or four different chapters within and then sub chapters or subcategories within that. So all you have to do, depending on where you are in your journey, you just have to flick open and start reading. But you're going to want to read the full uh, book. It's got tons of uh, really cool illustrations. And so he he just walks through different graphs and, and how he's come up with whatever he's talking about in the book. It's very good. Number one bestseller in a bunch of different categories. It was number, number two overall in small business. And it's published by Forbes. So uh, let's see. You can get it at, on Amazon uh, as a Kindle, soft cover, uh, hard cover. And you can uh, listen to it on Audible. And guess what? If you're going to BDSS, uh, Colin's got a surprise for you. Uh, he's probably going to give away one of his books. Also, uh, he's just coming out in mid-May with a workshop book, which I think is brilliant, that you could follow his recipe, and then you could just make notes and just build out a, a business that way. Okay, now let's get back to today. I know we touched on this. But what are some of the uh, different types of uh, messages that you can send? Well, you can actually send whatever you want, honestly. I mean, emojis can be included, but mm -hmm. you need to be careful when you, you're including emojis because that way you can, uh, instead of just sending one text message, there can be actually two text messages. So the price is actually higher that way. So try not to use too many text messages. But otherwise, you can offer a discount. You can offer a fixed discount mm -hmm. for a percentage one, free shipping, custom coupon code. So that, that's just regarding what you want to offer, you know, to the um, buyers. Usually what works the best is actually just saying, hey, I know that you're interested in the product, but the, the volume of how much we're selling currently is quite high. So decide quickly otherwise the stock may run out that's the text message that works the best actually um but yeah we do abandoned cart text messages that's our main focus we also offer post-purchase text messages that's not i mean that's usually the best best case use would be for example dog food if mm -hmm. someone's buying food online you can just send out a text message that way every two weeks saying hey I think your uh, your dog food supply is running low. Here's ten percent off and buy something. Um, so th that's the two types of text messages that we offer, and we're also preparing the you know the mass sending of the text messages, like the newsletter stuff. Do you ever uh, use uh, text messages for contests? No, no, we nope. never did that. Um, the thing is, you know, if you want to do it like that, then the the company needs to have it prepared, everything on the site as well. Yeah. Uh, since we're just a SaaS solution, um, companies don't usually get in touch with us saying, hey, we want to really customize this solution. Could you help us out a bit? Um, but yeah, I mean, it's an interesting idea. It might work. Yeah. What about um, like contest is one thing, but... I know with emails, what we try to do is, is build and segment lists, but we can build a profile. Like you just used dog food, for example. Well, do you have a small, medium or large size dog? So you could start to, you know, build out and segment, you know, that text message. Yeah. I, I think I strongly believe that text messages are slowly gonna not replace emails per se, but mm -hmm. they're headed in the, same direction i think so all of the things that we were used to, to doing with emails are slowly going to start getting used with text messages as well so yeah we're, we're on our way to start offering stuff like that as well probably. all right and um excuse me what about best practices well uh the best thing is to send the first text message regarding abandoned cards as soon as possible. Uh, the, the thing is, what we realized is that 
most of the people that get to the checkout page, 70% of them enter all of their information and then they abandon the card. So 70% of the people that will abandon your card will, will actually leave all of their contact information mm. on the checkout page. So you've got the 70% there. So what you do is you, oh yeah, what I wanted to say was most of them who abandoned the card actually were just distracted by a random thing in their like physical environment. Either they got some, I don't know, some, uh, something to do, like maybe their kid did something, maybe they're at work and their boss called them so they, so they have to uh, forfeit the checkout process. But still, um, what I wanted to say is like, most of them will leave their checkout information, I mean, their personal information there. What you do is you just send them a text message as soon as possible, usually within the five minute span. And then you send out another text message after two to four hours. After that, you don't send out any more uh, text messages because you can quickly become annoying. So right. two messages, maybe three, four, but slowly testing the number, um, but putting a cap on it at some point because you can just get annoying. And if the person didn't convert within the first two or three text messages, he's not going to convert later on. Right. And they, like you said, it might've just been because they were at work or something simple. And if they get one or if they get, you know, the second one, they're at home, but it, it could have the reverse effect and they might already be a customer, but you do that and they're just, Oh, you're just being annoying. Yeah. And uh, yeah. yeah. So I agree a hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, we do have, uh, you know, like do not disturb mode. Uh, by default uh, activated so you don't get a text message during the night which would be quite annoying mm -hmm. but still I mean if you get like three four five six text messages during a two day span I mean I would get annoyed I mean I usually get annoyed with random text messages from other companies just like a promo from the newsletter but still it's only once every few weeks but when you abandon a cart and then you receive like 10 text messages, holy shit, you know, like you get annoyed. You're not going to buy it or anything. Yeah. And there are, t and going back to this, this is for abandoned cart, but depending on what and your niche is, and I'm going to use something off, just completely off Amazon, uh, non, non e-commerce base. But if you're into uh, something like a charity or uh, I'll use addiction, for example, if there is a parent that's requested information and they want to continue, you could send out an email, a text message every day about a fact of a certain type of addiction, and they would be very grateful for that. You can do that with because some guy wanted toe fungus remover. And you start doing that, they can get very annoyed with that. So it depends really on that niche and what you want to do. And by the way, your if you do this correctly, you can build a community. It could be more towards healthy lifestyle or healthy, uh, healthy. Oh, I'm just trying to work with some. You can't really work with a. Uh, toenail fungus, but I'm trying to build a community around it, you know, you, you know, and then you have that group that you could work with and build a list. So there's a lot of different ways just because uh, toenail fungus is something that you have and you sell, you can definitely work within groups or build a group where you start getting a ton of value that you promote into the group, which they come back to you and all of a sudden you can promote. But I would not, and I don't know if you'd agree, but I would not be sending out something every day on toenail fungus. No, no. I mean, of course not. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, you, you wouldn't want to be in the restaurant, you know, having your phone like, uh, facing up and then just getting a text message about toenail fungus or something like that. <laughs> but but like a good example would be we've got this one client he he sells courses, and what he started doing with uh, with Card Boss is that he started sending out text messages every you know 
three days or something like that saying, hey, you've got a new document or a PDF or something like that or a lecture waiting for you in your uh, personal account. Don't forget to check it out. I don't remember the exact number, but he mentioned that he had a, uh, quite a large uh, increase in uh, opening of his lectures personal. So using text messages, you really need to be aware that First of all, it's personal, like it's your, it's their phone. It's really personal when they receive the text message. Second of all, they're going to open it. They're going to check it out for sure. So you can expect a hundred percent open rate, but also expect that if you're going to send out too many text messages, you're going to be the annoying company or the annoying brand really, really soon. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit about measuring the success rate of SMS messages. How do you do it? Well, what we do is we check the open rate and we check the return of investment. Uh, so for example, if they have 100 bucks in their shopping cart and they used up, I don't know, 10 bucks for sending out text messages, you just do the calculations and you can see the return of investment. Um, what we consider a success for us is if the client has above 800% return of investment with the text messages, and if his click through rate is above 10%. That for us is like, it's okay. Um, usually the return of investment is somewhere around 1,600 for dropshipping companies, all the way to 7,000% for legit brands, like specific, especially clothing brands uh, tend to get really high results. Regarding the uh, click-through rate, 10% for us, we do know, see that um, situations, and that's mainly with uh, dropshipping companies, but most of the companies that use our solution get a click-through rate of 20, 25%. Again, if you're a brand, then you can expect a click through rate of 40 to 60 percent. Um, so it, it really varies based on what you're selling, what kind of a business you're in. For example, if you're a drop shipper, expect a lot lower results. If you're just a small brand, expect a lot higher results, like times two of a drop shipper. All right. Okay. So let's see if we can get some questions. I know Tom just joined us. Uh, we got Hippology, Steve uh let's see these are people in the comment drip uh if you got any questions for today uh please put it into the comment section we uh we're going to be winding this up in a few minutes but uh if you're not using sms let us know well let us know if you are and let us know if you're not and why okay let me see We've, I think we've already touched on the legal requirements. Uh, so I guess this kind of comes down to my last question. And if you can tell us a little bit about Cart Boss. Uh, it's just a, a small company from Europe. Um, it, it was just an idea that came to mind uh, with the co-founder. The thing is... Um, I own a web development company as well. Uh, and a lot of the companies, because I used to be a consultant in that company, the thing was that they were always, um, they, they had problems with abandoned cards and they did emails and stuff like that, you know, to recover them. But then one time we were just like joking around in the bar, like, why don't we just send out text messages? And we thought that it's illegal, you know, to do it. Turned out it's not. Turned out that we had uh, almost a lot of the software prepared. So we just developed the software, tried it out on one of the clients. We didn't expect that he would have like 2,700% return of investment. And that's it. That's how we started. Um, and we, re we realized that actually with this company that people, even uh, company owners tend to be lazy. Uh, because we were trying, you know, to get that first client to start using our solution. 
but he had to prepare the text messages and get them translated and things were going nowhere for two weeks. And then we just decided, hey, like, what if we, we write the text messages, we get them translated, we connect your sites and everything, and you just let us know what the results are. And during the weekend, it, the tests were running. Um, I mean, he was selling, selling, selling. And at the end of the week, we noticed that he had insane results. So we just compared him to Google Analytics to see if the results are legit. And it turned out that they are. So mm. I just started calling different companies that I knew uh, personally because of the web development business and saying, hey, want to test this out, please? Because I mean, I've got just one client actually using it, want to test it. Um, and yeah, that, that's the whole story, actually. So just easy. And it, it is strictly for Shopify, correct? And WooCommerce. Oh, WooCommerce as well? All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What kind of, when you talk about abandoned cart, is there a percentage that people will come back to the cart? Uh, roughly around, I mean, again, depends on the company, I mean, on what the company is selling. Mm -hmm. uh, but usually we convert around 15% of abandoned cars. Uh, That's great. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things that I, I've seen, especially on uh, WordPress sites, uh, that they just do one thing that they have on their e-commerce page, like their checkout page. And that is just a killer for abandoned carts. And that is allowing the, uh, if they click something, if they're interested in something, let's say reviewing terms of service, all of a sudden it goes over your cart page instead yeah. of opening up in a new tab. And that's so easy to do. And that's for anything. When you're on a page, you want that secondary page, not to wipe out what you're looking at, but to open up in a new tab. So just a little thing that I've noticed over 30 years that you kind of should do. <laughs> I mean, when I check different sites, you know, that start using our solution, I'm just like, how can you guys even sell? I mean, there is no upsell. When, when you see company, e com companies and you can see the problems uh, that they have, like it, it's so easy to bump up the average order value with just a simple upsell on the checkout page. I mean, the small things, you know, but companies just, I don't know. I remember uh, th this just plays against the upsell side of things. So Charles Livingston, just an incredible guy, incredible um, uh, e-commerce seller. Uh, he has um, a Life Boost Coffee right now with Matt Clark, but he used to have, and he probably still has it, a an incredible supplement company. So when you went to the page and you wanted to buy something, it might have been, and I'm going to, I don't know the exact numbers. I'm going to make them up, but they're close to them. You might have bought a 30 some odd supplement, but then you could get double. And so now he, I think it got up to 67, but then you could buy um, either the subscription or I think, no, he went to the three pack. So you had a 90 day that bumped it up. Or you could go to the subscription, which had this huge lifetime value. But the average order went from, I think it was, Charles, if you're listening, I think it was like a $40 range uh, up to over $120. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what, what, in Europe especially, there is a trend, you know, where you always show the price if you buy one product, a different price if you sh if you buy two products, and a different price if you buy three products. Mm. That's really a popular option for online shoppers here in uh, Europe, uh, and the results are also really good. You know, because usually the discount is quite high, like twenty percent off if you buy two pro products and. 25% off if you buy three products. So a lot of people decide just by in bulk. Yeah. And so, one of the tricks you can do with that too, is if you have a really low, um, a low value product and you give a buck off or 15 cents off, I mean, that's 15%. 
Um, I don't want to give 15% off of a hundred dollar item. So I would just uh, show that it would be, you know, $10 off or $5 off or, and I would eat, I play back and forth between the dollar and percentage. And, and that way uh, it looks like you're giving away a lot more uh, mm -hmm. as you play around with the dollar value. And it's a, it's a great, even for anybody doing their discounts uh, on Amazon, you know, just play around with that because if you show a dollar value rather than a percentage, sometimes that works a lot better. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I think that's it. Is there anything else that you'd like to add before we go over to the wheel? Well, I mean, one thing that I would just add is that a lot of people are worried in the beginning uh, when you they try, try to test out text messages. Um, but what I want to say to people is just test it out for a week. Because, like, for example, Cardboss is really simple to integrate. It's just like you install the app and you're done. And since you have the text messages already prepared, why not give it a go and see the results that you can actually achieve? Because a lot of people are surprised that they get like a return of investment of 5,000%. And I'm, I'm not even joking. Mm. So that's how, don't be worried. Okay, fantastic. And oh, your contact information. Uh, my name, my surname on LinkedIn or info at cardboss.io. That's the easiest way to get in touch. Okay, very good. Okay, Kels, let's go to a sponsor, then we'll come right back with the wheel. Facing cash flow challenges with your e-commerce business? Discover Viably, your ultimate financial ally. From real-time sales data integrations to immediate funding access, Viably is here to support you. Plan your growth with their free tool for online sellers and engage with specialists whenever you need. Extend your cash flow with Viably. All right, we are back. Now, I just I just noticed that there's a few uh, more people that came on. Uh, if you'd like to enter the Wheel of Kelsey, hashtag Wheel of Kelsey, uh, tag two people, you get a second entry, and I'll give you about 15 seconds. Okay, <laughs> so that's it. Um, we're going to go to the Wheel in two seconds. Uh, today, it was really uh, great having you on. Uh, it's something that we haven't talked about uh, in a long, well, yeah, I, I think we've talked about it in one other podcast, but definitely bring it to the um, to to listeners and getting them to understand that it's not just about email. It's not just about newsletters. It's blitz marketing and blitz marketing includes SMS and with conversion or click through rates like you were talking about. That's incredible. So thanks for coming on. I mean, thank you for having me, uh, Norm. Really. I mean, it's nice talking about our solution. So yeah. thank you so much. Uh, but if anyone would have any additional questions later on after the podcast, I mean, they can just hit me up directly on LinkedIn or email. Okay. Or text messages. Yeah, or text. Yep. <laughs> um, Kelsey, let's go to the wheel. It's time for the wheel of Kelsey. All right. All right, so let me spin these entries up and let's see who today's winner is. If you are the winner, please email me k@lunchwithnorm.com and it looks like it is AMZ Elites. Oh, fantastic. Congratulations. Tom, congratulations. And Tom's over in London, so uh he's going to have to be careful with those uh what is it called? The GB GDPR. GDPR. That's it. That's what yeah. I'm thinking. <laughs> General data protection regulation. <laughs> you, you got the words right out of my mouth. So uh, again, thanks a lot for coming on um, today. It was awesome having you on and just have a great evening. Thank you. Have, the, have a nice remainder of the day. It's 12 o'clock uh, at your place, I think. Yeah, it, well, it's one o'clock, but uh, anyway, we will have it. I'm gonna think I might even go out for a cigar. It's a beautiful day. <laughs> Got a few here, but yeah, not today, not today. <laughs> All right, we'll see you later. And Kelsey, where are you? All right, well, thank you everyone for watching today's episode. 
uh, Tom, congratulations. And uh, if you could email me, k at lunchwithnorm.com, we'll set you up uh, with today's uh, email uh, message or the SMS messages uh, for your prize. And uh, yeah, hope you guys have a great rest of your day and uh, a great weekend. Uh, make sure you sign up for our newsletter. It's going to be going out again uh, on Monday. So we'll be doing that. If you haven't signed up, uh, links are in the description. And if you're wondering um, why you didn't get a notification that we're going live on the Facebook group, uh, that's because Facebook is doing something funky where they're not allowing uh, third party platforms to stream into Facebook groups anymore. So um, we have to do it on Facebook pages or YouTube channels uh, only. So um, it's just a, a little different going forward, but you can still find us um, live every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 12. Uh, but just on the Facebook page or YouTube channel. So check it out. And uh, I think that's it. All right. Okay, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. And you can join us live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at noon Eastern Standard Time. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you on Monday. Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur.